for many years, I would say. I never thought I'm a bishop, but otherwise I could be very, very one with the people. I was totally depending on God for everything. You look at every person with the eyes of God. When the Lord looks at you, He looks at you with compassion, with gentleness, with mercy, with love. When I look at the person with the eyes of God, I accept him as he is. In the mission area, when I go for an interior villages for mass or from feast, we call it Yatra. They will bring together many, many people from different walks of life. Hindus, one thing I appreciate them because for them, you are a religious man, they take in place of God, they have great reverence. When I go to the villages, they will even wash your feet and they welcome you in the villages. They attend the mass and now for Christmas and all, I would, without exaggeration, the 30 percent at least will be non-Christians. And during the ceremony, uh, liturgy, pin drop silence. They'll not create any kind of scene or anything. And afterwards, they'll be lighting candles. They would like to do that. Sometimes in our churches, I say, you know, when you're free time, come and pay a visit to our people. But I say, instead of you, I see many non-Christians here. After dinner and all those are close by, they come with the whole family. You are making Christ known, and they love Christ, I'll tell you. That reverence I've seen is wonderful. Now, when we had a new cathedral was inaugurated, people were coming. I used to sit down in the cathedral for some time late in the evening. Then several of them came and told me, this is a place we find peace. This is a place we feel that we'll be healed. And they come and pour out all their troubles and all, just listening to them. Because perhaps there's no one who listens to them. Nasik is a place, is a pilgrimage center for the Hindus, that Kumbh Mela and all takes place there. And whenever they pass that way, they bow before, as they pass the church, they'll bow reverently. And the grotto, invariably, you'll see some people are there praying there. I'm a very happy priest. <laughs> My world was very small. There was some time where I was sent to the for to do my spirituality course, and from there I went to the seminary as a spiritual director. The seminary gave me a beautiful opportunity to interact with the seminarians, to help them to come closer to Christ. During holidays, I used to visit the seminarians' houses. So when you go to the house, you know the condition at home, you know the parents, and you know the seminarian. And you are so much at home with them. When you come back to the seminary, your relationship with the seminarian does not remain the same. It's totally a different level. Because now you know him. The parents know you. He knows you. And he's very comfortable. And I'm always grateful to God for giving me wonderful priests in my life. Like Father Filio. So when you go to talk to him, he creates a space for you. So you are without any fear, any kind of inhibition. You share with him. He takes you at a different level as a friend very, very open, and that's still today. For the J.B. Fernandez, he looked after us, and he used to always tell us, I'm like a gardener, just tending this little garden that's given to me. And he was very, very used to love us and be with us most of the time. And that's how when the seminarians would come to me, my first thing to create a space for him. So he should not have anything, that fear that he, I'm going to judge them. And you share with them some of your own struggles. When I joined, actually I did not know what is seminary, only I knew what I wanted to be a priest because I studied through Hindi medium. And those days, after SSC, many boys joined. They were the age of 15, 16. And I was already 22 without knowing English. So he knows that you are not somebody above him in your perfection, in your holiness. You also have your struggle. So he is comfortable. Secondly, since you have visited his family and know the family, I used to tell his parents, I said, when he's here at home, he's your son. When he comes back to the seminary, he's my son. I said, the struggles are quite natural. And therefore, this is my spirituality. The real thing started at home. My parents were very spiritual people. Even when I joined the seminary, I just told my father, I'm going to join. And my father says, son, if this is God's will, who am I to come in his way? And the last stages of the formation, the seminary, I had a little struggle 
I thought I may not be able to reach that goal. And my father just casually asked me, son, is it true what I heard? I just put my head down and remained silent. And my father told me, look, he has seen a big storm coming in your direction. Trust in him. Before the storm touches you, he'll change its course. In all my difficulties, problems, crises, my father's words come, before the storm touches you, he'll change his course. And this is how I try to help whoever come to me, to focus on Christ. He's the way. And when he is there with you, you don't have to worry. The church needs today not only intelligent priests, the church also needs holy priest. This is God's work. As a priest, you're not going to do your work. No, not your plan, it's God's plan. According to his plan, as the Lord has chosen only 12, with the 12, the whole world knows Christ. Today we are much, much better. Even if one comes, he is a chosen one of God. All that we do, give him that space. Make Christ known by your life. Otherwise, we can have seminars, we can have wonderful speakers, but it's all on the head level. No? We have to see that it is translated in our own lives. And today's youth, they want to see. They want to see there are some role models. I, as a priest, should not lose my identity. I become one with them, everything, but I must remember I am a priest. And vocation, in a way, is not necessarily for priesthood. Now, so many lay people today are preaching retreats. They know Christ much more than we know Christ. The way they speak, the way they this thing is amazing. And therefore, the Lord, according to the time, He also chooses people. In our own diocese, I have, uh, when I took up Nasik, I went around all over the parishes and I saw there are lay people deeply rooted in faith, thanks to the German missionaries who started the mission work. And they really gave faith. They gave Christ to people. And these lay people, when I saw, they were deeply rooted in faith. And I said, if there's a spiritual renewal, it will come not necessarily from priests and religious, but it will come from the lay people. So we have started a lay missionary group. They commit themselves for one year, then they renew for second year, then renew for third year. After three years, they become permanent missionaries. I give this word missionary where there's a commitment. And these people are very committed people. And we have nearly 50 lay missionaries all over the diocese. They're wonderful people. So my idea is every parish should have minimum 10 lay missionaries. They're like 10 assistant priests. So this is how vocation you can see from different angles. Priesthood is something I must be convinced a call from God. And there's a commitment. And when God calls you, then you have to totally surrender yourself. I may be priest, I may be bishop, but I may not be doing what God wants. I may be doing what I want. We need to adapt to these changing times a little bit without uh, compromising with the spirituality. See, I am a spiritual leader. I may be good in psychology, I may be good in science, I may be good in administration, but I am a priest. So what are those priestly qualities? What do you expect from a priest? He's chosen by God. His thing is to make Christ known and bring all together to Christ. And one of the things I found in the lay people, I'm not trained in every field. So if he is good in a particular field, why not I use his expertise for the good of the church? So I need to be open and I need to bring them to the same level. So we work together. My thing as a priest, I carry on my priestly thing. And he as a lay person with his expertise, he's helped the church to grow. Now I have to sincerely rediscover that thing that I'm a man of God. Therefore God has chosen me. Somewhere I've lost that thing. No? And therefore St. Augustine says, you know, what best you can offer it to God other than yourself? So in order to offer yourself, first find yourself. When you find yourself, then you offer yourself to God. So I, as a bishop, priest, maybe I lost myself somewhere. So I had to search for myself and then offer myself to God. For many years, I would say, I never thought I'm a bishop. 
because only for big liturgical function, then you put on all this vestment and then you go. But otherwise, I could be very, very one with the people. And that I enjoyed it. And secondly, looking at the people, the poverty. Sometimes you hold the hands of these people, it is made of as if clay. You look into the eyes holding their face, the eyes have no lustre. It's like an old plastic, no, no shine, nothing. And then I used to come back. The chapel was the only place I could sit down and just turn to the Lord say, why you brought me here at this age? And what do you expect from me? So I was totally depending on God for everything. And that's how I learned to be dependent. I know what I'm doing. It's not my work. It's His work. If it is His work, He'll be my strength. He'll guide me.